In yesterday's video, when we flew the ILS into San Luis Obispo, I said that today's video would be a surprise, hopefully both to you and to us. And that's because I always like to base our last video off of questions that we're actually getting from you. And the question that I picked for today is one that we've heard all of the time, both from brand new instrument students and from longtime instrument rated pilots like us. And that is, when should I activate the approach in my flight plan? Now, I think this term, activating the approach and the menu item that goes with it is one of the most confusing items in the IFR world. And just to get to the answer really quick, I would say you should never activate the approach using the activate the approach menu item or button in your RNAV system. And the reason for that is it doesn't actually do what you think it does. Going back a long time ago, back when our RNAV systems were unaugmented and non-primary navigation sources, we actually did essentially activate an approach. But with our modern systems, our WASP-based avionics, like the G1000 and the GTN series navigators, you do not need to manually activate an approach. Instead, that menu item, activate approach, simply changes where you're navigating to. Now the challenge is it doesn't give you an opportunity to confirm it. So think about this. When we're navigating, we never want our systems to do something without us actually confirming it. So for example, when you need to go direct to a waypoint, what do you do? You select the waypoint, then you hit direct to, and then a screen pops up and it says, do you actually want to go here? And you say, yep, that's the waypoint I want to go to, activate. When we activate a leg, if we're intercepting a leg on our final approach course, we select that leg, we say activate a leg, and then it says, do you want to activate this leg? And you look at it and you say, yep, that's the leg that I want, and we confirm it. If it's the wrong leg, we can cancel it. So that's the key. In those cases, we're able to see exactly what the system is going to do. We verify it's what we want it to do, and then we do it. But when you select activate approach, it's going to change your navigation and it does not give you the opportunity to see what's going to happen. And this can get you into massive trouble when you're operating in the cross country world. So for a great real world example, let's take a flight from Baton Rouge to Lafayette, Louisiana. And if you look at this route, it's a very basic route. We can depart Baton Rouge and fly over the Fighting Tiger VOR, join Victor 559, and then take that into Lafayette. And let's say we're planning on landing south in low weather. And the ILS runway 22 left would be the ideal choice for an approach. And you can see that localizer printed on the chart because the localizer course defines the Betty intersection. So in this case, this is an extremely easy flight. Essentially, you can take Victor 559 to the localizer, then turn inbound on the localizer and fly the approach. And when you look at the approach chart itself, you can see that Betty is an initial approach fix on the localizer with a minimum altitude of 2000 feet. And it's labeled no PT so that you can skip the procedure turn. From there, you're going to cross what's called a computer navigation fix. That's CF BDF in parentheses. We talk about these in the course. These can be a little confusing, but essentially our RNAV systems sometimes need a little intermediate fix to help them navigate, to essentially lay out their route but that fix has nothing to do with how we actually fly the procedure. It doesn't define altitudes or any rules for us. So that's why we call it a computer navigation fix. It's just for the computer, but they do chart it so that you're not confused when you see it. And they put it in parentheses so that you understand that this is just for the computer to use when navigating. And then after that, you can see we have a locator outer marker at LAFS and our glide slope intercept altitude of 2000 feet happens right in front of laughs. Okay, so now let's actually take a look at how our RNAV system is going to handle this. So you can see that we do have the route loaded in here following Victor 559 to Betty, which also is the initial approach fix on the ILS runway 22 left. And then you can see we have that computer navigation fix, and then we have laughs, the outer marker. Okay, so oftentimes when you're flying into a tower controlled airport, something like Lafayette, you're gonna be arriving into the airport. Well, obviously other aircraft are departing out. 
And so many times, air traffic control is not going to clear you for the approach until you approach the final approach fix. So let's take this scenario. You're flying along Victor 559, and air traffic control says, Cirrus 216 Bravo Delta, descend at pilot's discretion, maintain 2000, track inbound on the localizer. We've got a couple departures before your arrival. Expect your approach clearance around four miles from LAFS. Okay, so this is a very common scenario. Essentially, now we've been given a discretionary descent down to our published glide slope intercept altitude, and we've been told to turn inbound and track the localizer. So once we get to Betty, we're going to be able to turn and fly inbound. And then we're simply just gonna follow that localizer, maintaining at least 2000 feet MSL, and we're flying it laterally until we get the rest of our approach clearance. So we cross that computer navigation fix, we start to approach LAFS, and you hear, Cirrus 216 Bravo Delta, cleared ILS runway 22 left. Okay, so now we're cleared for the approach. We're established on a localizer, approaching LAFS. We can see that the glide slope starting to come down, but what would happen if we clicked Activate Approach? So we hit Procedure, select Activate Approach, and immediately, without confirmation, the aircraft starts turning. Now, if we're hand flying, you could be following that localizer and now your RNAV guidance is turning off to the side. If your autopilot is coupled, it's just going to start turning away from that localizer course. And where is it going? It's going to the first fix that was loaded as a part of this approach. And that, in this case, is the Betty initial approach fix. It can either be an IAF, or if you loaded a feeder route, it may turn and take you direct to the feeder fix. But the point is, when you select activate an approach, it takes you to the first fix on that procedure without ever giving you the opportunity to confirm it. And that is why I never use it. Because if I do wanna go somewhere, if I do need to go direct to Betty, or as we did in the last video, go direct to Creep, what I want to do is select that fix on my own and then hit direct. Confirm that's where you wanna go, and then you can activate that point. You know exactly what the system is going to do. And that's why, as I said, you should never really use that activate approach feature. Okay, so this is the kind of stuff that we teach in the course. It's important to understand all of the technical details of instrument procedures. And if you're going through your instrument training right now, you get that, right? You're diving through approach charts, all the rules, the aim, the advisory circulars, the FARs, there's just a massive amount of knowledge that you're trying to absorb. But not only do you have to understand the technical part, but you also need to understand how to apply it in your airplane. And that's what we do. We get you through all of the technical parts so you fundamentally understand each of these procedures. And then we show you how to do it on an actual flight. You could see us load the procedure and fly the procedure and work with air traffic control. I would say one of the toughest parts about being an instrument student is putting together that IFR picture in your head. And that's because you're flying so many procedures close to home. The missed approach, vectors to another approach, or the missed approach straight to another initial approach fix. And then once you go out there and you start flying in the IFR world, you don't actually do that, right? You don't fly a missed approach and go straight to another initial approach fix. Instead, you're flying a cross country route. And so it can be difficult when you're in training to really understand how all of this gels together. And through this course, we help you understand that. And if you're like Colin and I, you're a longtime instrument pilot, this is a fantastic resource for you to dig back into when you see a procedure that you're unfamiliar with. Maybe you're at an airport and you decide you wanna fly the visual climb over airport to depart. You're just not really quite sure what it is. Well, you can watch us fly one in Medford, Oregon. And that's also why we developed Bold Method AI. Because whether you're a brand new student or you're a longtime instrument pilot, or maybe you're an instructor getting ready for that airline interview, you're gonna have questions. And so you can find those answers through our Bold Method AI powered search. They're accurate, but then they also show you where to go in the course so that you can learn all of the information and link back to the FARs and to the AIM. And that's why when people ask us, is this course really meant for new instrument students or rated instrument pilots? The answer truly is both. If you're a new instrument student, 
you're going to find that you are perfectly prepared for your instrument check ride. When you sit down with that DPE, you'll understand all the procedures from departure through arrival through approach. Even though you may not have flown many of them very much, or maybe never at all. And if you're an instrument rated pilot, you've got a resource that you can fall back on anytime and anywhere. Because again, like anything else, our courses are a one-time purchase with lifetime access. Okay, you could tell I'm a little hoarse today, and that's because Colin and I have been manning the phone. So I've got our phone number up at the top. If you have any questions about this course or about instrument training, how to get started, give us a call or send us a text. If you are ready to go, I've got a link down below to add the course to your cart. I also have links to both the instructor guide and the student guide so you can see all of the content that we teach in this course for free. Download those. It links to every lesson, tells you what we teach and how we teach it. I am really excited for you to get started in this course, and I cannot wait to hear what you think.